Hi everyone, Harry Frank from Maxon here, and in this tutorial, I'd like to show you Analog from Universe 4. Analog is meant to be an overall analog video simulator, simulating different color shifts, noises, as well as a fully 3D CRT screen output. But I'd like to start at the top, focusing more on the color controls of the plugin. So let's start on a new clip here, and I'll apply Universe Analog, and this can be located in your effects under Universe Stylize, locating Analog there. If you are in a host app with the dashboard, such as Adobe Premiere or Adobe After Effects, you can use the dashboard, go to Stylize, and apply Analog just by double-clicking on it like that. Now, first up at the top, we have controls to crop the source down to different aspect ratios. And this actually feeds all the way back down into the 3D engine that I'll cover later, but this just preps the size of the footage to work with the 3D engine properly. Now, these first few controls might sound fairly simple, such as saturation or phase, even a temperature. But mostly what I want to stress here is that much of what is happening with all of our color controls in terms of phase or temperature is that we are shifting the color space from RGB into YUV and doing various adjustments to the YU and V channels and then shifting it back to RGB. Working in YUV gives things a much more video-like feel. For example, the filter control is shifting everything from RGB to YUV and it's kind of doing a custom replacement for the luminance channel. So it's doing a custom mix of red, green, and blue and replacing the Y channel in YUV and then shifting everything back. That custom mix ends up being a lot more video-like in feel. Things like phase are manipulating the U and V channels in different ways, both in terms of shifting the overall hue as well as shifting emphasis and blurring of the U and V channels. So in short, there's a lot going on with what seem to be a number of very simple controls. Now, starting at image contrast and moving downward, these aren't doing any sort of YUV manipulation. These are all different types of image adjustments. Image contrast itself is doing a contrast to the color information, focusing on the contrasting areas of the image. Chroma split is pretty straightforward. It's doing a basic RGB separation. You can't have a video effect without RGB splitting. So. That is definitely there. Luma Contrast is actually a very simple Luma Contrast control that allows you to either bring it positive or negative to have a low contrast look. Black Level is simply to elevate the black point of the image, often used to make things look a little bit more degraded. Now, the screen brightness, although it's up here at the top, is really tied into the 3D material that's being used and it's actually the color emission of the screen so this allows you to sort of pump the brightness of the screen up so it's an actual emission brightness not just a brightness filter on the image although sharpness does introduce a bit of a sharpening filter all the way up at 100 as i bring it down this actually introduces more of a bilateral blur bilateral blurs eliminate very fine details, but keep most of the contrasting edges present. The result ends up looking like what a lot of analog circuitry does, which is to try to enhance and pump up the edges as the image ends up downsampled for analog recording. Now, after all that lengthy explanation, tint is actually pretty straightforward. It's just a basic tint to the source video, and this is very useful for things like computer displays, security monitors, that kind of thing. You'll find as you mix and match a lot of these, you can create some very interesting looks. For example, if I turn the saturation all the way down and I turn the image contrast up very high and maybe turn up the black level a bit, you get that sort of 1960s tube camera kind of feel. A lot of it coming from this image contrasting area. Gives, gives it that sort of ghosted edge kind of feel. If I overcrank the saturation, we start to move more into 70s and 80s television. So a little bit oversaturated, still got some of the contrasting edges and kind of a hazy kind of feel from that elevated black level. I'll turn the black level down 
maybe pump up a little bit of the lumen contrast, but turn down the image contrast. And then we start to get more into a cleaner modern television. Now all of this is using some scan lines, and if I zoom in here, and I twirl open the scan line section, we have a number of options. By default, we're using a CRT pixel pattern. And this is the only thing in this entire plugin that actually isn't procedural. The CRT pattern is actually based on an image, which is tiled over and over. The other scan line patterns that you'll find in here are procedural. So we have horizontal and vertical scan lines. We can do squares and we can actually do PC CRT dots. I can pump up the overall scale of the dots or scan lines, as well as their overall spacing. Now switching back to the CRT control, the scale is controllable. So I can bring the scale down and it controls the tiling of that pattern. We don't have individual spacing or feathering of that CRT pattern because it is image based. The overall scan line amount, so how much we are mixing in the original image to the post scan line process is something that you can control with the scan line amount. So all the way up through this scan line section, I want to emphasize that the focus of the image processing and all the different ideas that have been put into these different parameters have been less about degrading the image and more about processing and simulating different types of looks that feel very analog. The interference section is where we start to put in things that are actually to degrade the image rather than change different components of the image. So the static amount, and I always found it interesting that we refer to TV noise as static because it's actually ever changing, but the static amount is essentially an analog noise kind of simulator. So it's not a basic random Gaussian noise, it's actually using a mix of fractal noise patterns that end up looking more like TV noise. Now, as I introduce noise to this, how much it is displaced using that noise is the static displacement. A little bit goes a long way there. The scramble amount is going to introduce a wavy distortion, and I can control things like its overall speed as well as its scale. Flicker isn't an overall image brightness flicker, but it's a flickering of bright and dark areas of the image. We can, we can control the overall scale as well as the speed of these flickering lines. And then what we call the line, this is the scrolling interference line. If I turn up the thickness and the brightness, you'll see it by park on a place where you can actually see it. There we go. Now I know from experience, this line actually happens only when you record one video source from another video source and you will get a scrolling line from top to bottom. So we can generally leave this kind of thin and the color is kind of an aesthetic choice and then how fast it moves is up to you. That is controlled with the line speed. Now tucked inside this Interference section is random interference. So this is stuff that only happens occasionally. And how often it occurs is defined with this random interference frequency. So let's say I turn this up and I park myself at a frame where we start to see stuff. So that it will flicker and scramble and anything else that you define to happen during this interference period uh, that's what's going to happen. So let's say we add some random noise. We have color separation, scrambling, all that kind of stuff. So all of this additional interference happens during the flicker phase. We can turn all of that off simply by unchecking the random interference. Next, let's talk about transformations and cameras and lighting and all that 3D stuff. Here in Premiere, we don't really have any sort of 3D space. So any 3D integration I would do would be using properties that are defined internally within the effect itself. So things like rotation are defined locally with the plugin itself. We don't have any sort of cameras within Premiere to adjust or match to. So 
with analog, we have some basic 3D controls like the overall curvature. And this isn't a curvature effect or anything that looks like it's faking curvature. This is actual curvature. So if I rotate this around, we can see that the surface is actually curved. So I can rotate it in different ways. And we have some basic scale controls to kind of adjust the overall scale. There is an internal camera within analog. It kind of uses its own internal 3D space that you're not really going to be able to match to anything, but you can move a camera in XYZ. You can adjust the field of view and you can adjust the XYZ rotation of the camera as well. And this is in addition to the transformations of the image. So I'd like to switch over to After Effects real quick because After Effects does have its own internal 3D space. And I want to talk about some caveats with this plugin that I hope to revisit in a tutorial very soon, revising my words to say that the After Effects integration of world space with analog is a bit limited right now, but that really is just the case. So you might be hoping that you could perhaps do some match moving or tracking with After Effects and match the analog 3D space to After Effects. And I'm here to tell you that we haven't quite gotten the integration of our new 3D engine to match the world space of After Effects just yet. It's coming, but it's not in this version. The controls that I was showing you in Premiere are the same here in After Effects. There is a very basic camera with a field of view, rotation, as well as the internal rotation of the object, uh, the curvature, scale, etc. Now that said, you can do some pretty clever things with the internal 3D space. In this example here, I've got a background plate with a television that looks like this. And I've got some footage that I've actually pre-comped, and that looks like this. I've actually taken that source footage and just really crushed the levels to get a matte so I get the exact shape of that television screen, and I'm using that as a luma mat over my analog effect. But to position it, I am using my camera's 3D position to position it where it needs to go and match it in the scene. Using the X, Y, and Z position, its rotation, and a little bit of scale control. So you can kind of match it into your scene like that. I've actually comped the whole thing together using super comp. So here it is without, so it's just placed into the scene. And then up here in super comp, if I open up the panel, here is my TV and I've added some color correction, some edge blending, a little bit of haze, a little bit of reverse light wrap, as well as some diffusion. Next, I'd like to drill down into the material and lighting section here. Now with this plugin, I really wanted to try to keep things simple because this isn't a full-fledged 3D plugin where you're loading objects in. You're essentially putting an image on there and curving the screen. You might want a little bit of specular and a little bit of reflectivity, and that's really about it. This first parameter here is a color that we are multiplying with the original source. So if I set this to zero black, and then I start turning up the color mix. This will turn up the amount to which I am multiplying this black. So that's what's being handed into the render engine to render the surface. And we allow you to simply adjust the color of the surface here if you ever needed to do so. So I'm gonna leave this just slightly illuminated, maybe with a little bit of additional uh, light blue. The parameters that most affect this screen, and this is probably a little more visible if I start adding a little bit of rotation to this. We have control over things like the overall specular, as well as a glossiness, which is kind of an overall reflectivity as well as additional specular. And the reflectivity or the reflection map is in controlled right here with the environment map. And this is actually a number of maps that were taken from Cinema 4D because, well, we can do that now. So I pulled some interior shots that are either um, 
interior bedrooms or interior photo studios. So we essentially have some gloss, some specular, and an environment light to kind of control the specularity and reflectivity of the surface. There's also an in internal point light, so I can move the internal point light around. Here in After Effects, we also have the ability to add additional lights. So if I go up here and I add a point light and I change the color of this, let's say we change this to something that's easy to see. I've got a kind of magenta point light and I go to my light controls and I say, instead of saying using analog lights only, I can use both. So I'm using both the After Effects lights as well as the analog lights. And we'll see that we are now having the surface respond to the After Effects lights. Lastly, we have a very basic glow integrated to kind of give it a bit of haze without having to add additional filters, but feel free to use whatever favorite glow that you've got. So that is Analog from Universe 4. My name is Harry Frank from Axon. Thank you so much for watching.